You're listening to the world of business and taxes with Mike Lodge, keeping you informed. So let's get started. And welcome to another podcast of the WBT. This is Michael Lodge. As you know, we've been going over the subject matter of starting our business. We are now on number six, and it should have been number one. I should have started this at the very beginning. This is brought to you by Lodge & Company, a business and tax advisory firm for small and business for small businesses and startups. Visit our website at www.lodge-co.com and learn more about Lodging Company and what they can do for you. Over the next few days, we are still going to continue talking about how to start a business. What is the processes we need to go through, the questions we need to ask ourselves and everything else. But one of the issues that I completely forgot about is your personal finances. And this should have been step one. Make sure your personal finances are, are in order. So as I was walking last night, one thing popped into my mind, which often happens when I'm out there walking. And really, I should have talked about this subject. As I said before, it should have been the first lesson because it is so very important issue that every small business startup, unless someone has given you millions and billions of dollars to get going, but in most cases, it's a couple or of people just trying to start a business. Before hanging up the sign, get your personal finances in order. So hanging up your business sign on the side of your building or office is a dream for many of us. I mean, it was for me. I was excited about it. I still have pictures of that day. Whether that means having your own startup or selling your own professional services. But first, to ensure success, it's important to lay a solid financial foundation to, to weather even the smallest of money crises. And when you're cash tight some months, it's a crisis. And it feels like a crisis. And the crisis begins. So let's wait longer than you think. Work your day job as long as you can and do your side business after hours and on weekends. We have seen too many people quit too early and then struggle. While waiting can be frustrating, it can also help you get your ducks in a row when it comes to your own financial dealings so that when you do make the leap you're in good you're in a good place to do it pay down debt to improve future cash flow while you are still employed try to pay down as much as you can on your debt that not only helps with cash flow on a monthly basis once you're on your own but can also improve overall credit worthiness in case you need a business or personal loan in the future. Moreover, moreover, better credit scores could also make it even easier to refinance existing loans to free up more cash as well. Refinance while you have regular income. If you're contemplating self-employment, consider taking out consolidated loans or refinancing student loans or mortgages before you quit your job as lenders typically want to see a recent pay stub as well as two years worth of tax returns showing steady income. Lenders ask for a lot more information and they don't put as much weight on self-employment income. By successfully refinancing a mortgage and student loans for longer terms, you might be able to make lower monthly payments. So do it while you still have a job that you can show steady income. Once you become self-employed, there may be weeks or months where you don't have any cash flow coming into your cash flow system. If you're wondering when to do this, this is the most opportune time to refinance existing loans as borrowing rates will likely start to move up over the next years. However, keep in mind, 
that only a fixed interest rate will protect you from rising rates. So think about that. <coughs> Excuse me. Figuring out your health insurance plan. Leaving a full-time job also means leaving behind employer-based insurance benefits. However, you may be able to enroll in continuation coverage per the Consolidated Omnibus Budget Reconciliation Act, or COBRA. This option allows you to continue coverage under your existing, existing plan, typically at your own expense. This is a very expensive option and should only be used for a short period of time. And then you also have to look, have a retirement savings game plan. While you might have to forego adding to retirement savings at first as you get your company off the ground, don't let this slide too long, especially as the contribution limits can be higher than your old 401k plan. This is where you really see the benefits of having your own business because as a business owner, you can get to save more retirement plans. The best plan for you will depend on how many, if any, employees you have and how much income you make. While offering an employer-sponsored retirement plan will help attract employees, it may not be a startup's best interest to get one right at the get-go. Focus on attaining profitability first, then introduce savings plans into the mix. When the time is right, keep it simple and cheap. So there's also plans out there called the SEP IRA and, and other type of retirement programs. Talk to your money manager if you have one or your bank or your CPA or accountant and they can kind of guide you through what is the best tax-wise for you? So a SEP IRA is likely the best way to go for the solo self-employed as they're easy to establish, easy to administer, and allow for flexibility regarding contributions. Those contemplating self-employment should ask themselves several additional questions. How will you pay for your business expenses? Do you have a cash reserve for your business? How will you pay or be covered for income tax purposes to ensure that you have enough withholding for the year? Will you submit quarterly payments or will you hire a payroll company to help issue you a uh, periodic paycheck? Do you currently have a disability insurance policy in place? So I should have started my my series, my business, starting a business series with this very important topic about getting your finances in place. If if you aren't in a stable place and if you're just going to rush in and do your business, you have to look at the time and the amount of time that you have to spend on that business. You have got to do all of the planning that we've talked about in prior prior lessons. And you have to really focus on are you in a good place to do this at the moment now some of you might go out there and you might get venture capitalists to give you billions of dollars but that's not for everybody of the other people you and i are probably the ones out there on the shoestring budget trying to do as much as we possibly can with what we've got and we become very creative in the way that we manage our new business but it's vital that you and I, we have our personal finances in a pretty good place before we jump on the bag wagon and we start saying, okay, I'm going to go out there and put a, a sign up that says Lodge and Company and get going. There's a lot to do. And I'm sorry, I, I really do apologize because that should have been my first message to you is get your finances in order. Get a solid foundation. If you have a solid foundation on your personal side, you can build a solid foundation on your business side. Because you already have the responsibility of doing it on your personal side. 
So get your personal finances in order and let's continue on as we we go forward on learning how to start a business. We've talked about a lot in the first five lessons and now lesson number six. We have talked a lot about the formation, about what the analysis we need to do, the market strategies, comparing what our competition is doing. And in the, in the next few ones, we're going to talk about the formation and the different types of entities that, that are advisable for you. And then we're going to talk about the tax issues. So I hopefully we go full circle on how to create a business here. And the first one that we should have taught is get your personal finances in order. This is Mike Lodge for the WBT. If you would like to read along on this podcast, you can go to www.pod, P-O-D, I'm sorry, www. <laughs> You know, there's just too many W's when you got so many websites and so many emails and so many other different th- situations. They all begin to run together after a while. And that's what just happened with me. So if you want to follow along with this, just go to www.wbtpodpod.com. Click on the blog and you can read number six and follow along. So that's it for today. Let's focus on starting the business for 2017. And let's get going. I'll talk to you later. Thank you for listening. Join us again tomorrow. Stay informed with the world of business and taxes with Mike Lodge. Have a great day. Again, this podcast has been brought to you by Lodge and Company at www.lodge.co.com.